And this is the Brennan Torpedo. The very interesting machine. It was used to defend ports and harbours as it was tied to the shore by a couple of cables. This is the shore station that powered the torpedo. A much better model of this was built by Electroglide 1976, but I didn't have the parts and the engineering facilities that he has, so my model is a little less sophisticated, but I've decided to show it and give a commentary in the video. So starting with the shore station, we have my imitation steam engine, Here's the big drum that pulls in the cables. There's a slipping clutch. And what that does is provide a constant backwards tension on the drum to keep the cables under tension. And then there's another more serious clutch here, like a dog clutch, which is used to spin the drum when needed. Also, there's a steering facility, which in my model is operated by this handle. What it does is move these two pulleys back and forth, and in doing so, it effectively changes the speed at which the two cables are being pulled in. This is the torpedo. The most important part of this very weird device is these two drums. They rotate in opposite directions and one of them operates the propellers to drive the torpedo. In my model, the other one drives these wheels to actually make the torpedo move. Of course, the real thing didn't have these. Here, there is a mechanism to guide the wires onto the drums when the drums are being loaded with wire. And when we run the torpedo, uh, these are disabled just to save energy. Steering is controlled by this differential gear. The best way to show the operation of the torpedo is to run the drums without any cable on them. And the easiest way to do that is to run them with the winding machine, but not actually winding cable. So we'll start the winding machine. Each drum is rotating in a different direction. The drum at the front, through this chain of gears, is operating one side of the differential gear, and it's also running the driving wheels. I've loosened off the pulley there because we don't want the torpedo to move at this time. The second drum, the blue one, through another set of similar gears, drives the differential's other side in the opposite direction. This means that the cage of the differential is not moving and this is attached to the steering and because it's remaining in its vertical position the torpedo is steered straight ahead. When the wires are being wound onto the drums this mechanism winds the wire evenly across the drums. When the torpedo is actually in operation, this isn't needed and so it's disconnected to save energy. This is how the steering works. There's a differential gear here And each side of it is driven by one of the drums. And as the drums are running in opposite direction, the middle part of the differential gear doesn't move. I can show you that just by spinning 
the two drums in opposite directions and you'll see that it stays in its vertical position. Now if one of the drums t is turned now you see that the middle section of the differential moves. So if a method is provided to pull in the cables at different speeds then this will move the differential gear and it's connected to the rudders at the back and for our purposes it also moves the steerable front wheel of the torpedo. Uh, here we're going to wind the strings onto the drums of the torpedo. Seems to be going quite smoothly. And we'll look at the other end of the shore station. The big drum is freewheeling because this clutch is disengaged and so the drums are pulling the wire because they're being driven by the winder. Now we'll run the machine and see if we can get the torpedo to move forward. It's very slow, but as you can see, it actually is moving forward Despite the fact that the energy comes from the strings which are pulling back. I managed to get a little more speed out of the torpedo by changing these gears. Before this were a 1 to 1 ratio and uh, now they're a 1 to 2 which is doubling the speed of the drive to the wheels. I know there's not much to see, but it is actually going faster than it did before. Now I'll try to demonstrate the steering. So when I turn this handle, the two pulleys move back and forth. It's not easy to show how the steering works as it's not very effective, but it does actually work. In the next part of this video, I will show my alternative to this design, which in my humble opinion is completely and utterly ludicrous, but very entertaining and a perfect subject for a Meccano model. However, I think there's an easier solution. Let's see what that is. While I was building the Brennan torpedo and trying to get it to work, it seemed to me that this could be done so much more easily with electricity. Uh, electric motors were a viable option at that time, and so I thought I'd go ahead and make an electric torpedo. We'll call it the Spigley torpedo, just for fun. The shore station is much simpler. 
it's just a big drum that carries the cable. The cable has four conductors, two for each of the two motors, and there are slip rings to send the current to the cables and compensating for the twisting of the cable on the drum. This motor operates the wheels, which of course we have to add as the torpedo is not going to move in the air. It also drives the propellers. The second motor drives the steering. Now we can see it in operation. This switch sends power to the main motor. Off it goes. Quiet, smooth and completely reliable. Uh, this switch steers the torpedo. Moving the rudder. And also the steerable front wheel. We'll steer it to the left. There we go. That's it for the Spegley electric torpedo. Why they didn't do it this way is beyond my comprehension. It is so much simpler and so much more efficient. Well, that's it for my models of the Brennan and Spegley torpedoes. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think of all this. Thanks for watching.